Yes, you know Leah, Leah Diaz, you know, from Married to Medicine. But we're not talking about marrying the medicine. We're talking about being married to business. And you know Hype Hair Magazine, the same Hype Hair Magazine that we grew up on. Ladies, if you're around my age, you understand this magazine was everything. This brand was everything. But she's coming in, giving it a whole new facelift. It's a legacy magazine. It's like yeah. if you grew up in any urban city, you saw it at your local newsstand, 7-Eleven, whatever it was. And for black women, it was like the magazine that we referenced for our hairstyles. Yeah. You come out on a Friday, you fold over the pages you want, and you take it to the hair salon on Saturday. So it's like nostalgia for black women. And I'm thinking that she's planting all these beauty supply stores herself. No, she's franchising. We're gonna learn this franchising model. We're gonna learn the beauty business. We're gonna understand the habits of why people buy. We're gonna understand so much. It is incredible. So let's say I wanted one. Yeah. What are the numbers behind me being able to franchise for you um, currently today? Right, so there's an interview process. There's a $10,000 licensing fee. You mm -hmm. get the name for five years, but you also get our expertise of helping you build it out. There's a 4% royalty monthly. So yep. the 4% is off of the sales or the profit? The sales. Mm -hmm. oh. How she started to where she is now, prepared to be inspired, prepared to be impressed. I was working on my master's degree in social work. I was a full on social worker. Were you the one that had to physically take the child? I physically, that was my day to day job. Oh to put gosh. holds on drug exposed babies, to remove kids out of the home. That was my job. Leah bought this legacy company, but she bought it for much less than they were asking for. She negotiated like a dog. We threw out a seven figure amount, yeah. And I was just like, listen. <laughs> <laughs> and we negotiated oh. a lot down. So I brought the magazine for six figures. How much? Hey, you ain't put it. Welcome to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast, where we find dope people that did dope stuff and they're continuing to grow, man. Um, we got a very, very uh, interesting guest. And I don't even know, because I looked at our DMs and I was in LA. Yeah. And I reached out like, yo, I'm in LA because I want I want to build more, get more Los Angeles guests. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what made me ask you. I don't know. I don't know. I, synergy. I don't know. I, I have no, oh, I have no, because I, I don't DM, I don't DM anybody. You know really? I mean? like, okay. I thought that was like, okay, well, listen. Typically it's like a referral or somebody that I, I, you know, I've been watching for a minute. Got but it. I just DM'd you like, I must've been in LA looking to do more. And mess, yeah. unless somebody told me about you, I don't know. Got it. But I'm gonna get to know you today. Okay, listen, I'm here. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's so, do it. Um, introduce yourself to those that don't know. Okay, my name is Leah Dias. I'm from Inglewood, California. I'm here in Atlanta now, mm -hmm. and I own Hype Hair Magazine, which, if you know hair, uh, has been around for 33 years. It is the authority in black hair. And I also own a chain of beauty supply stores called mm -hmm. The Girl K Ballet. That's why, because mm -hmm. you're lit. Thank you. Hype I'll take Hair you. Magazine for yeah. 33 years. And yes, I remember seeing it vaguely as a child. Yeah, it's like, it's a legacy magazine. It's like, yeah. if you grew up in any urban city, you saw it at your local newsstand, 7-Eleven, yeah. whatever it was. And for black women, it was like the magazine that we referenced for our hairstyles. Yeah. It would come out on a Friday, you fold over the pages you want, and you take it to the hair salon on Saturday. Mm. So it's like nostalgia for black women. Okay, so you obviously didn't start no. Hype Hair Magazine. I'm too young for that. Right, yeah, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> 33 years, goodness gracious. Yeah. What's, how did you come to acquire it? Um, so I actually work with the magazine, creating content with them. Mm -hmm. um, and then the owner was getting ready to sell it. So some people on his team said, you should make a bid. And at first I was like, this is like not really my angle. But then I thought about it. I'm like, I can make it my angle. Yeah. So I put in a bid of all the people that put in a bid for Hype Hair. He selected mine. And so what year was this? It's been um, three years now. Three years? Three years I've been the owner. Oh. Huh. Yeah. I'm, I'm very curious, just be, being in the magazine space, mm -hmm. because everything's online, uh, what did you base your bid off of? Um, so Hyper <clears throat> transitioned from print to mm -hmm. digital. Mm -hmm. So there's an advertising base, okay. but it's all digital ads. It's different. And so the bid was based on, obviously, the trademark and the nostalgia of being a yeah. legacy brand, 
but then also to the advertisers that have been working with Hyper for the last 30 years. So there is a revenue base there. And so that's what. Um, so, well, before you put in the bid, were you, did you see the numbers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Were they good? No. No, I would imagine. No. So was, uh, okay, was it a so profitable there, company? Good, it, good, is, good is relative. Yeah, of course. Um, it was good for a digital, um, I'm sorry, a print publication that had moved to digital because everyone else had become a, extinct. Yeah, for sure. So to be sustainable, it was good. I saw life in it. Pro was it was it profitable? Was it breaking even? It was profitable. Was it, it was profitable. Barely. <laughs> but it was profitable. Barely. Okay. Okay. But I saw a lot of opportunities in it. And so there was a relationship with Conair. And we could talk about this now or later, but um there was a royalty deal on the table. That was that, a good time. Okay, cool. Let's talk about it. <laughs> so there was a royalty deal that was on the table but hadn't been cultivated with Conair. Conair is a billion dollar company. Like Oh wow. Um, and so when I saw that, I said, I can breathe life into this relationship. So that was a lot of value for me. And over the last. I'm sorry, don't, don't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. The When you say there was a royalty deal with Conair. Licensing. So basically Conair would use the Hyper yeah. name yeah. to develop products that basically speak to black, black women. Because Conair, if you think about it, it's not really like I'll a black. The name. You got to explain it to me. Conair is like, if you go on your mama or your wife's dresser drawer or beauty drawer, they have a Conair brush, blow dryer yeah. somewhere. Okay. Every, it's like the staple yeah. is the number one hot tool company. I've seen the curling iron, the little clap thing. Yes. Okay, okay that's, I've seen that. That's the Conair little clap. curling yeah. iron. Yes. yes. Okay. So Conair basically used the Hyper name to market those products to black women. And so um, it so wasn't- Conair is a white owned company? Yes. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to use hype hair to mm -hmm. create products to sell to this particular demographic. Right, which because is smart. black women are very particular about the products, the mm -hmm. tools, all of that that we use. And so there needs to be a authoritative stamp that is for us. Got it. And Conair has the authority, but maybe not with black women. But hype hair does have that authoritative voice. And so with black women when it comes to hair, so they use our name, licensed products. Mm -hmm. So when I brought Hyper, it was on the table, but the relationship hadn't been cultivated. There yeah. were no new products. There was really nothing going on. Mm -hmm. The products had been developed like 20 years ago. They weren't in stores. You had to like call Conair and like go through this long process to even get a hold of the product. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that part was not profitable, but I saw life in it. Mm -hmm. um, so my life's work for the last three years has to revive that relationship mm -hmm. and now we're in um 300 and something nordstrom's racks we're in 900 oh, wow. and something burlington's we're online so kind of just like revitalizing that has really been so nordstrom racks burlington meaning hair tools tools mm -hmm. oh so not because you, when you think about that you think i closed but there's always this section of yeah okay beauty got tools it. so oh, wow. um we're in all the beauty sections so we have Combs, brushes, um, ponytail holders. There's a business podcast, so I'm going to ask you some some numbers. Mm -hmm. In the uh, so, so, Conair develops the product. Correct. Uh, uses hype hair. They sell it and just send you some money back, or. Mm -hmm. Are they just giving you a certain amount of money to be able to use this name for whatever they want? How does that work? It's a little bit of both. <coughs> so they pay a licensing fee, mm -hmm. a flat licensing fee to use the name, but yeah. then there's also royalties involved based upon the sales. Mm -hmm. So the more that I market, the more that I make the product attractive and the more it sells, it's like I, that's my skin in the game. So yeah, there's a flat fee to use the name, but then there's also a royalty that comes quarterly. Got it. And mm -hmm. it's really cool because the product is hype hair, so it's your product pretty mm -hmm. much and people look like yo i'm going to get the hype hair exactly okay, gotcha and i guess that's that's a part of what you probably negotiated to get a good royalty saying i'm going to promote it as well exactly so i have skin in the game for sure so i'm running ads i'm going to shoot my content into nordstrom's rack saying this is where you can find the product so yeah it's a so, it's a win for them it's a win for us too it's a good relationship I love it. Acquisition of hype hair. Mm -hmm. What all did you get? I got the trademarks. Okay. I got the liabilities. <laughs> all the bills. <laughs> all the bills. <laughs> um, 
I got the infrastructure. Okay. I got the social media handles. And I got the relationships. Good. Mm -hmm. So did they print the magazines themselves? No. The printing was outsourced. So we're not mm -hmm. printing right now. Honestly, I think the way people consume content like changes so often. Yeah. And magazines are just like such a it's just like not a thing. Yeah. Like my daughter is nineteen and when I told her I brought high pair, she was like, What is that? So I showed her, <laughs> she was like, You brought an Instagram page? Like, why did you buy Instagram? So it doesn't even resonate to yeah. like a younger audience that it's a magazine. Um, so there's Got really it. no value in us printing the magazine right now, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah. Well, is I would imagine, you know, like your analytics demographic older. Yeah. People who. I mean, when you say era. older, my age. So I'm 39. Mm -hmm. So our, our target is 35 to 45 women of color. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess as a woman, so I'm 38. We're, I'm about to be 39. So we're the same age. Okay. Yeah. I would imagine that. As a, if I'd have had a sister, mm -hmm. that it would mean more to her than me because I just didn't pay attention. I was playing basketball for right sure. There. Yeah, yeah. No, it, most men, it's like, okay, that's yeah. cute. You have a hair magazine. But, but when I tell a black, age. they're like, "Girl, you own hype hair." Like women my age get it. Wow, they totally get it. Got you. Mm -hmm. And um, the only res revenue model the brand had was the magazine. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. Okay. You don't have to answer, but I. I I'm will. Just, I'm okay. like an open book. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, <laughs> what was? Because this is important. Because now I'm actually starting to think of like some magazines that I grew up with, and is there, or some things that I was, um, I was really in love with. Yeah. As a child, and maybe they're kind of phasing out because they've been doing it for so long, and yeah. maybe there's a time to revitalize it. Mm -hmm. But w you were working for Hyper. Yeah, like shooting content for them gotcha. and like, um, yeah, because I had the beauty supply store. Yeah. So there was like some synergy there with me working with them. So Got it. not like full time, but off and on. Got it. Okay, mm -hmm. good, good, good. So when you were looking at the um, the balance sheets or like the P&Ls, mm -hmm. what did you discover? Like, was it like how profitable was it? Was it just break it even? Um, it wasn't super profitable. There were some months that were break even, but at mm -hmm. the end of the year, they were in the green. So gotcha. I felt like that was six figures in the green. Nah, nah, nah. We talking in five figures. In okay, the green. <laughs> five figures in the green. And this is the, the thing. Episode, one of the five first things. <laughs> um, one. It was like, you know, when you take over a publication, or you take over any business. Like people are nervous because they don't know like what your agenda is. Like yeah. what? Are you, like I had to lay off like eighty percent of the staff. Really? Yeah. How many staff was on there when you? I was like. 14 or 15 people. And it's probably just been people there, got the relationship with the owner, just That's you got a really job. what it was. Mm. People working remotely, not really a lot of accountability. And it's mm. like, how do you justify this much payroll? Yeah. So within like 45 days, I let go of most of the staff. Ugh. So it's a lot of people that probably don't like that I brought high hair. Not bad. But I had to do what I had to do to For keep sure. the brand. You know what I'm saying? For sure. I mean, at the rate it was going, it's probably gonna close out anyway. For sure. And that's what I saw because yeah. you can't you can't just pay people work remotely. They don't have accountability and, you know, people have good intentions. But the truth is, if you don't have any benchmarks for people, it would, like what do they have? to? Yeah. The and there wasn't a, an amount that they wanted. You just had to bid on it. Oh, well, no, they threw out an amount. He threw out a seven figure amount. Yeah. And I was just like, listen, <laughs> <laughs> listen. Um, and we negotiated mm -hmm. a lot down. So I brought the magazine for six figures, but um, how much? You said you were open book. I, I'm just going off what you told me. I wouldn't have asked. Well, I would have asked anyway. But I mean, like, I guess it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't I, matter. Um, he started at a million. I got him down to two hundred thousand. Dang, you ain't playing. Yeah. I, I mean, the truth is, is that I'm a black woman. Everybody mm -hmm. else that bid on it, we're not black. We're mm -hmm. not women. What were they going to do with it? Yeah. And that was my argument. Give it to a black woman so it can thrive. Yeah. And then maybe it could come back as a consultant, right? Ah. So I'm still cool with the old owner. Like, yeah. we talk all the time. What is he he's, doing now? Um, he's helping me, actually. We're, like, working on some projects together. So you hire him as a consultant? If I need to, yeah. Mm -hmm. As, you know. Okay. Right now we're working on doing an actual product line, like shampoos, conditioners, mm -hmm. and he has, like, a lot of insight with that. Not backed by Conair, though? No. Okay. Uh -uh, this is going to be independently standing. 
Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, you got that 200,000 back already, do you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm working on it. That's amazing. I'm working on it. Yeah, sure. that's good. So do you have, you have a website, I would imagine, it's just continue mm -hmm. to update. So you kept that person on staff, like continue to. No, actually, I let that person go. And you know what? I hired my cousin. Shout out to <laughs> Melissa. <laughs> my cousin was a webmaster and she's just, she's just like, she's my little cousin. Yeah. So she's, yeah, she's our digital director and she took over and she's doing an amazing job. Good, she good. has been for the last three years. I don't advise people to hire family, but this is like. Yeah, special situation. It works. Special, it's a special situation good, for sure. Good, good. Okay. Did you have a physical building for Hay Bear? I did not when I purchased it, but yeah. I ended up buying Memorables. a building to house everything, to house the staff, to have space for the beauty supply business because mm. I'm still running that in LA. Um, and then with that, I brought in beauty people to like rent out suites in it. So it's kind of gotcha. like a salon suite, but mm -hmm. it's still like a high pair office. That's dope. So it's a little bit of both. Good. Mm -hmm. All right, so walk me through, you have a bunch of beauty supply stores. Mm -hmm. How many? Um, there's four now. We closed a couple during the pandemic. Really? Yeah, we had seven locations. How is the beauty supply store industry going? <sighs> well, you caught me on a bad month. <laughs> It's not a good month for us. I mean, just um, period. Just how, like, the, it seems like anything walk in physical isn't, you know, people are so comfortable buying online. Yeah. I mean, I think for black girls, we still, the beauty supply store is still like our spot. Mm -hmm. So I've had to change the way we do business. Like, we have a website. I think growing mm -hmm. up, there was no beauty supply store that had a website right, right, right. or Instagram it page. There wasn't websites at all. It was, Not right, at all. But right, right. Yeah. But, um, so I've had to keep up with the times. Like mm -hmm. we do deliveries. We have an Instagram page. We have a website. Mm -hmm. We're not like your typical looking beauty supply store. Like we've had to spruce it up. Got it. Um, but it's a lot of work. Yeah. Retail so, is hard. So people can order. When you say you do deliveries, you deliver it or you got like a somebody that. No, like, no you're not going to catch me no, delivering. No, 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 not you, but I'm saying <laughs> it's somebody like in your store, almost like Instacart, like picking us yeah, up. Yeah. Yeah. Like I have. Dope. um. Yeah, like we get deliveries in, and I have that's dope. Yeah, I have um, two girls actually that drive, and then my dad helps too. Mm. Um, so yeah, we do deliveries during the pandemic. That's what kept us afloat. We were literally waking up in the morning, getting our online orders, like delivery routes, and that's how we stayed afloat during the pandemic. Were you doing deliveries before the pandemic? No, mm -mm. Mm. I didn't really see a need to. Yeah, but the pandemic put my back against the wall, so we had to be super creative. Why I wonder why um why beauty supply store sales slowed down in the pandemic. People had a whole lot of money. No. It was the best year I've ever had, yeah. but I just had to get to my customers differently cuz a lot mm. of customers were not comfortable coming out, so they're like, you know, like we're not sitting in the house with our hair a mess. I see. So we just had to find a creative way to get it to them. I got oh because and California was really shut down. Oh no, we were shut down, shut down. I'm coming from a, a perspective of Atlanta. No, you guys were open. It never closed. <laughs> no, I'm talking Atlanta about height open. of the pandemic. Is Luca going and parties? Is yeah, jumping. actually, I spent a lot of time in Atlanta during the pandemic because there was nothing to do in LA. Yeah, we were yeah. shut down. No restaurants. No mm -hmm. nothing. Yeah, nothing. So, Man, yeah. so okay, so you have this idea. Let's. Let's just pivot with what's going on. Mm -hmm. We're going to start delivering. Yep. And you're not going to stop that because it's um, working, I imagine. Exactly. It's Good. not as great as it was during the pandemic, but a lot of customers have gotten used to it. Yeah. So I didn't want to dissolve that part. Got of the it. Business. Got it. Yeah. And how long have you been owning beauty supply stores? Um, This is my ninth year. Really? Yeah. Congratulations. Started with one. Started with the online store selling hair. Mm -hmm. Then I did a pop-up shop on Melrose for a summer. Like a short term lease, right. like four months. And did, a pop up shop. Yeah, like in a, I, they probably do it here where you can like kind of sign like a short term lease. Yeah. Yeah, so I signed like a short term lease. Okay. On Melrose, did like a hair store. I loved it, made it work, and then built out the beauty supplies. Okay, let's 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 let's, let's go back a little bit. Mm -hmm. How do you start? What were you selling online? Did you have one product? Like I'm about to sell this hair. Lustre's pink oil. That's the only thing I know. <laughs> I know a couple of things. I know Lusters. I know uh, what's the what's the you know cocoa Bonner butter? Brothers. Everybody knows Bonner Brothers. What's the big cocoa butter that don't do nothing? It don't. The Queen Helene, <laughs> the big jar with the brown top. It's the yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. it, you walk outside, it's over. 
it so. doesn't even <laughs> shout out to Queen Helene, but so, it doesn't work. So did you start what did you start with? Hair extensions, okay. wigs, um, bundles, like a typical just hair store online. Gotcha. And okay. then I started opening up my accounts with the distributors to get products in. So it was like a very slow transition to have like a full on beauty supply store. But I started mm -hmm. with hair and wigs first. So hair and wigs, and you're selling hair and wigs and marketing, promoting that. Mm -hmm. And then you open up the, you do the pop-up shop with hair and wigs, or you got With hair and products? wigs, and then accessories, no, not products. What so are like, the accessories? Um, so like wig bands, uh -huh. scarves, bonnets. People don't know this, bonnets are the number one selling product. Really? for Yeah, in beauty supply stores, bonnets. That makes sense, mm -hmm. I suppose. But the number one thing in the store, period? The number one selling thing in beauty supply stores across the country are bonnets. Hmm. Even more than any other accessory. Yeah. So you was making a killing with the wigs, wig accessories, and bonnets. Mm -hmm. and oh, I wouldn't say a killing. <laughs> let's say, let's. <laughs> a killing is definitely I, I, was, I was sustainable. I was able to pay yeah. the bills, and I saw like a pathway to make more money. So okay. I wasn't losing I wasn't killing it. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Let's let's go back a little bit because this gives me some more yeah. uh, questions. Mm -hmm. What were you doing before you started selling the hair? That's so funny. I was working on my master's degree in social work. I was a full on social worker for LA County. Oh wow. So I was one of those ones that, you know, like drug exposed babies. Like I was an emergency response worker mm -hmm. for mm. nine years for LA County. For nine years. Mm -hmm. So you're a social worker, but you said you were working on a, a, a degree? Yeah, I was working on my master's degree. Your master's? Yeah. Did you get it? No, I didn't finish it. That money started coming, huh? No, you know what it was? I just, honestly, I should go finish it. I was so close. For I probably what? only had. For what? Because to say that I did it, I spent a lot of money and time on it. But then you'll spend some more money to do nothing with it anyway. Exactly. And I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, you have a master's? <laughs> and it adds some sales to the bottom line and all. You know what I mean? It's true. Um, I don't know. I just like to finish what I start. Maybe it's more about that. Well, why don't you finish your career as a social worker? <laughs> no. Yeah, exactly. That <laughs> That's a no. Right. Shout out to social workers, but it is the <laughs> hardest job yeah. ever because you don't turn it off. Yeah. It's not like you finish seeing like, you know, people in their worst. I always say like, I never got mad at my clients for being upset with me because I'm meeting you on your worst day of your life. Yeah. Yeah, like your kids, I don't care if you're a crackhead, a prostitute, da -da, your kids are the most valuable thing to you. And when they see you, you're coming to take them away. Yes. Were you the one that had to physically take the child? I physically, that was my day-to-day -day job. Oh to put gosh. holds on drug-exposed babies, to remove kids out of the home. That was my job. Do you take somebody with you? You know what? So... I would imagine they try to You're supposed you. to take the police. However... I got more done without law enforcement, honestly. Did because, somebody try to fight you? Yeah, I got hit before at work. Um, I got socked actually by a mother. And it's funny, like I saw her like a year later and we like chopped it up. But <laughs> Tell me the story, what happened? I was, uh, her daughter had came to school, had marks and bruises, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and it was an automatic detention. Yeah. The girl said my mom beat me, like it was nothing to, a detention is a removal okay. when you detain a child. So it was like, no questions asked. Like the girl had marks and bruises. She had been telling her teacher that my mom is beating me up, hitting me. I knew I had to remove. How old was she? She was probably like 11, 10 oh or 11. Gosh. Not too small, but not like a teenager yet. So somebody in the office knew the mom. So while I'm doing my paperwork, somebody gave mom a heads up that DCFS is here taking your kid. So mom shows up in the office, turns up, bitch, you're not taking my kid. Like she was ready. And so I'm like, okay. So I'm sitting in the office and I don't engage, but her daughter is like scared now. She's like, I don't want to go with you. I don't yeah. want, I'm like, it's too late. Like the paperwork she doesn't is done. Go with you. She's scared. Her mother yeah. is telling her, you're not going with her. I'm taking you home. Like get up. And I'm like, no, you can't really take her. Cause we already have the detention notice. So I'm trying to serve mom yeah. the detention notice. And when I hand her that paper, she just socked me right in my chest. Oh wow. Yeah. In the office. And then the office ended up calling the police. That was like, so I've probably saw thousands of families. That was probably like the worst thing that's really ever happened. Really? In my head, let me tell you the story that's going on in my head. Tell me. You walk through 
the area that looks like uh, like South Central a little bit, especially it's in California. Yeah, the projects. For like, real. yeah, you're walking through the projects yeah. and you have to take a kid, and mm -hmm. she's like, "No, you ain't taking my child," mm -hmm. and it goes down because yeah. he's high. Yeah, in my mind, that's like, yeah, you're walking through this area. Yeah, that totally has happened before. But I'm saying, with that being the worst, if someone punched you in your chest, I would think... It if, could have gotten way worse. Yeah, for over nine years? Honestly, social work was the gift of gab. So I would tell them, like, listen, this is not my decision. This is the state's decision. So yeah. how you act in this moment when we go to court in a few days, I got to report this. So if you want a chance, uh, let's just work with me. So many times I have mothers walk their kids to the car with me because I'm like, I got to document how this goes. Mm. So if I go into court and tell them that you acted crazy in front of your kids, they're not going to give you your kids back. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I would just tell moms, like, just work with me. Mm. Like, this is going to be hard for your baby. This is going to be hard for you. But if they see you working with me, it's going to be easier for them. Yeah, yeah. And give me your mama's number because I'm going to try to place them with your mom and dad. Where's your aunt? So I always try mm. to, like, place with family mm -hmm. first and always try to make the mother have, like, strength. Like, the worst thing you could do is, like, disarm someone and not give them any control or power. Yeah. I'm gonna give you, pack up a bag for them. They gotta come, but help me pack up a bag, give me some clothes, find something that your kid likes that they can have so they can get through this process, you know. What are the reasons that you have to take somebody's kid though? Sheesh. Um, the worst <clears throat> and most common one was drug, drug exposed babies. So it's not the mother attacking the child, it's just There's the fact some that they're of drunk. those. <clears throat> some of those but mm. most of it was like drugs like you can smoke marijuana in california but you can't like be coked out and, and someone else calls and says hey this person is smoking yep. crack and kids are not coming to school on time that's like the first thing kids not coming to school regularly the school calls in a referral neighbors see kids out by themselves at night so they call oh yeah you ever get nervous like your heart pounding Mm -hmm. oh, You're making me relive this. This is like, oh, no, I'm saying because this is, uh, I mean, I never had a chance to talk to somebody. Who yeah, no, I did it for a long time. The cough drops are on my, uh, my desk, I think. Um, yeah, it was a hard job, but honestly, it taught me how to interact with people like so well. Yeah. If you can convince a mother to give you her kids without incident, yeah, you can give somebody buy a wig. My whole point. <laughs> This is easy. Yeah. When you started the the business of selling the hair, did you still have the job and you were making the transition or was mm -hmm. it? I didn't quit it? my job until like probably like eight months of me having the online yeah. store. And did you quit because you didn't want to do social work anymore or you're like, yo, I just got this entrepreneurial bug that I want to. Both. Like the social work was burning me out so much that I wasn't able to give anything to the business. Mm. Then I realized like you can't, you can work and build a business. I totally believe that. You can't work that kind of job and build a business. Got you have it. To make like, and I ain't quit right away. I took a leave of absence. Okay, so got I, you. <laughs> just in case. I ain't quit my good county job. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I took a leave of absence. Good. So if I can make it work in three months, then I'll quit. So mm -hmm. I gave myself like three months to like hone in on it. And you locked in. Mm -hmm. Got it. So when did you replace your income? Um. Okay, well, the fortunate thing is when I finally quit I was married okay. to a physician so mm -hmm. my household bills were taken care of oh that makes entrepreneurship yeah. a little easier absolutely yeah. so I like I don't shy away from that like when I see people say like I took a leap of faith well yeah I kind of did but I also had a husband that made good money at the time for sure for so, sure okay shout out to my ex-husband for paying the mortgage <laughs> 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 when y'all when how long y'all married we were married for almost nine years nine years mm -hmm. So hold on, it must have just recently. Uh, I've been going through a divorce for three years. It was just final recently, like very recently. Well, okay, did y'all, okay. You didn't have to like do no money. Were you like super up or was he still up or did somebody? No, I have to, I have to cut him a check. You gotta cut him a check. Uh, in all, okay. Nah, in all fairness, it's bad, you can't cut it. <laughs> It's bad. In all fairness, nah, he did. Nah, he did get you out the mud. Nah, he did hold you down. So well, let's almost... no, let's backtrack because I got him out the mud too. Because when I married him, he was an intern. He didn't have any money. He was in debt. So I got him out the mud first, and okay. he got me out the mud. So well, you say when well, you met him, he was a physician, though. 
He was an intern in medical school. Okay. He didn't have no money. But he had the money for a period of time. After he finished medical school, yeah. 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 That's what I'm saying. So he kind of. Nah, y'all ain't about to play me. He was, <laughs> I don't I, like that the, I got to write him a check. I tell him all the time, like, listen, this is really foul that you're making me write you this check. This is bad. We don't like it. But if 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 it was the other way around, they'd be like, oh, yeah, the guy. Yeah. His his wife was a physician when she met him. He was out here taking people's kids and ain't selling hair out here. And then nah. she had a, he had enough time to build his business. Yeah, he owe her her back. Nah. (laughs) I gave that man kids. I gave him a a home. I paid my dues. Is he still a physician? Yeah. He still makes good money? Yeah. Then he's petty. Petty is... Yeah, that's petty, man. Like, you got bread, bro. Chill out. He makes more than me, for sure. To this day? I think so. I think that he tells the courts that he doesn't. Oh, he's a savage. Yes. Oh, for sure a savage. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> for sure a savage and you have to pay him every month um not every month i have to give him a lump sum Dang. but he was after alimony too i'm I look i'm like i'm listen you gonna look at this i'm just telling the truth the story he, he wanted, entrepreneurs go through he wanted a check yeah dang mm-hmm. okay um all right so okay fast forward you're selling hair you start uh selling the accessories and the bonnets yeah how long did that go on for um, I did the pop-up shop for like seven months. Mm-hmm. Cause yeah, I mean, it was seven months. I did a three year, a three month lease at first, and then I renewed it for another three months, so like six months. Gotcha, six months. But I did the pop-up shop on Melrose, and you made enough money to, to get your first storefront. Yeah, but my first storefront was not what you think. I'm thinking of the beauty supply store. You go in, it's a. It's like not, it was a water store. A water store. It was an old water store. You see those water stores where you take the big buckets in and you... So it had water damage everywhere. Like the things outside of Kroger? No, they don't have money. Oh, they don't have water don't stores have, in Atlanta? Not. Nah. But, but it's in the actual building. Oh, oh, okay. Hold Wait, on. Wait, there's so no the water bit? stores in Atlanta? No. Oh, so water? how do you guys get your alkaline water? You buy the bottle of alkaline water. Oh, no, no. In LA, LA, we have water stores. And you take your big, like... Arrowhead bottle, and you go in there and you fill it up. So we have outside of Publix, they have this little <laughs> thing where you can just take your jug and fill it up. Okay. And you just okay. So that's kind of like what a water store is. So imagine that times like fifteen machines in one space. How big was that? It was like yeah, my store was like nine hundred square feet. I still have that store. Mm-hmm. Really, it's a beauty supply store. It was a water store that had um. They had water damage. Yeah. And the guy just walked away from it. So I got it dirt cheap because the owner was like, you got to fix it up. I'm not doing anything, but you can have it. So he literally charged me pennies on the dollar for, we, to take over the space. Got you. Um, did you buy it or you leased no, it? No, I, I I'm still leasing it. Okay, got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. The other buildings, is, the, is it a good model to buy them or you just lease them? <clears throat> so the high pair offices, I own the building. Mm-hmm. I... Don't love being a landlord. Yeah. I mean, but if you're your own landlord. Yes, but I also am renting to how many other people in that building? Like seven or like seven or eight other people. Oh. Mm-hmm. I have a hairstylist, a nail tech. Got it. A trucking company is in there. An esthetician, a church. Hey. But they come with that check though. It works. It is it would it's a headache though. Yeah. Every first of the month, you got it's everybody something. got a story. It's something. <laughs> it's, it's something. So this first store, how much were you making out of your first store, the water store? <laughs> the water store. That's wild to me. I never. The whole business is predicated on people bringing a job. I laugh because people still say to this day, "Oh, you're where the water store used to be." Like people still think it's the water store, like that space. It was a water store for so long. Um, what do you mean? How much did I make? Like, how like, much were you making out of that store? Was it? Was you making good money or? Mm-hmm. Good money is relative. Yeah, that's what I'm like, what do you mean? So like, I think my first day, like my grand opening day, I did like $1,700 and I was like, I went out and celebrated. I bet, that's good. No? No, it was good because I was my only, st- I didn't have staff. Yeah. Oh, I was still yeah, building my inventory. Yeah. So now like, um, 
yeah, I, I still would be happy with that number on a on a day. Um, but then like the fanfare left, and then I start having like those three hundred dollar days, and then those two hundred dollar <laughs> days, and I'm like, oh, I didn't make enough to pay rent, and then I'm here, and I had a new baby, and I'm oh, working the store yes. by myself, and I can't even afford to hire like a staff, but I'm tired. So um, I don't know what kind of turned that store around. It was really like word of mouth. And I think <clears throat> me being there as an owner every day, people kind of felt sorry for me. <laughs> like this Poor lady thing. is in here with this baby and she's here all day. So I think that that created like loyalty because people would wow. come in and like actually get to see the owner. And I had my yeah. son wrapped around me for a couple mm. months while I worked that store by myself because I couldn't afford staff. Wow. Yeah. Um, and how long were you there before you opened your second store? A year. So a year. Mm -hmm. So I guess it first day good, but then it slows down, yeah. and then something happened. Honest, it got. Well, I think I built the brand loyalty being mm -hmm. there, and people saying like, oh, "Okay, wow, this is the owner." And then I had like really great staff. Honestly, mm -hmm. I hired girls that live <clears throat> in the neighborhood, so they would tell their mamas, their aunties, their cousins, yeah. come. So it became that. You want to buy stealing? All the time. I bet. All the time. All the time. So why we open another one? You know, <laughs> right? <laughs> she like, I think she's had a moment like, yeah. Why did I open another one? Um, honestly, I opened the second one because it was my neighborhood beauty. I'm from Inglewood, mm -hmm. and the lady that owned the neighborhood beauty supply store that I used to go to was mm -hmm. selling it, and I'm like, gotta do it now. This is like, did it come with all the uh, the products and stuff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she had been there for years. She was retiring. She was just gonna shut down the store, and I was like, "Can I buy it from you?" And he was like, "Sure." How much? Um, I think I only paid like twenty five thousand dollars for that store. And it had all of the all the equipment? fixtures. She was done. She was done. She was happy to get a check because she was gonna leave the fixtures there. Honestly. What about the products that was in there? She did a blowout sale. Got it. And then when I asked her if I could buy it, she said, "Well, you can have what's left." So it wasn't a ton of inventory, yeah. but. She had the relationships because she had been there for so long. Mm -hmm. And the store was basically built out already. Yeah. I had to do some upgrades to it. but So were you thinking, okay, I'm going to have these two locations or like this is going to be the move to a bigger initially? No, I wanted to have two stores. Yeah. yeah. My L.A. and Inglewood store because I'm from Got Inglewood. It. So I always wanted a store in Inglewood. Good, um, good. So yeah. And you, you you get all the products and stuff like that in that joint. And obviously it already had traffic. Mm -hmm. She was probably just done Done. Running it. She was driving from Orange County to Inglewood every day yeah. and she was over it. It she took twenty five thousand dollars. On top of, you know, that blowout sale, she probably just liquidated everything. She did. So she made a bag out of that. Too. Good. And she was still blowing out, blowing out, even I'm like, Okay, I'm gonna buy it. Right. I gave you your <laughs> stop deposit, stop, stop. stop blowing out. <laughs> and she blew out to the last day. Wow. Yeah. And how long were you there until you opened the third location? couple years after I opened the Compton store. So you ran two for a little while. Yeah. And you're lit at this point. Like yeah, like two, this is yeah, two, two stores. Going down. Now there's brand recognition in LA. People know I'm the black girl from Inglewood that owns the beauty supply stores. What's the name of your store? Uh the Girl Cave LA. And I don't even think I see branded beauty supply stores. No. It's just beauty, beauty supply. Beauty supply, yes. Is that how yours is? No. So if you drive by it's totally <clears throat> different. We got pink signage. We have like like you gotta see like if you go on our website you're like this is not your typical beauty supply store really like it's it doesn't look like let me see let me see okay what's your what's your Instagram? go to our website the girl cave oh the LA. website what's the website what's the it? girl cave la the girl cave. k the letter k uh c-a-v-e like a man cave but it's a oh, girl cave, cave. Uh -huh. the girl cave la la yeah dot com yeah do you got some other girl caves we had one in Dallas. Yeah, because when I was searching it, I saw Dallas. I was like, somebody ripping you off. But that's yeah, you. No, no, that's, that was me. I was just yeah. trying to protect you. So <laughs> Thank good. you. Okay. That, that cease and desist. Out oh, 100%. There. Oh, wow. You see? Like, that's not what beauty supply stores ever did. Yeah, nah, this is dope. It's like branded. Yeah, this is dope. This mm -hmm. is dope. Okay. Okay. So you go in our stores and our girls have on, like, little black shirts and pink writing that says bonnets and bamboos. Aww. We call our Instagram followers our homegirls. Like it's a whole, the whole movement. Like if you shop in Black owned we're gonna make it cute. I love it. So you got Manchester, Crenshaw, mm -hmm. Rosecrans, Anaheim, and Dallas. 
Dallas is closed. I should take that off the website. Dallas is closed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so tell me about that. Did someone try to franchise it? Or there, you that just, was a franchise <clears throat> store, and um, that was part of <laughs> my my ex husband's family had that store, so they they needed to close that part of the divorce. Oh, so you made it a part of it. Yo, close that down. Y'all can't. Have nothing yeah, to do no, with you're this. not gonna run my good name in the ground because you guys don't like me. Go ahead and close that store out. Mm-hmm. Was it, did it have to be any money exchange in that, or no, just just take my good name off that, off the door? Were they doing well? You know, I don't know. I don't know. That was part of it. Oh, so you didn't even share. so a part of the all agree. I guess you just let them open it and make their yeah, own money. It's, it's family. They didn't right? give you no franchise fee. They gave me just, a franchise fee, but I wasn't checking their books and like saying, yeah. telling my family like, run me your money. Yeah, like okay, it's family. But, okay. Okay. So Dallas, dang, it's over. Dallas. Okay. But these four, <laughs> Anaheim, Anaheim, Rosecrans, Crenshaw, and Manchester, those are your mm -hmm. four. Yes. Well, so I own and operate. Which one's the water store? Manchester. Manchester. Okay. <laughs> Manchester, yeah. <laughs> and Crenshaw, it's the Inglewood store. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the Anaheim store is a franchise, and the other store in Inglewood is franchise also. Oh. Yeah. So someone opened it. They give you your franchise fee. So can you mind sharing me how, like, what that that franchise model is? Yes. Like if I wanted so, one. Right. So I I love my stores. Um, I wanted to expand them, but I got three kids. I knew, yeah. like, the model to expand them wasn't me operating them. So, um, yeah, I opened it up. I got a franchise attorney, had her build out all of the bylaws and all of that, and I opened mm. it up. And we still accept franchisees. Um, Give me some numbers. I want to open one in Atlanta. Are you going to open one in Atlanta I since am. you're here now? Okay. I definitely am. I'll do it on the other side. I'll do it on the east side. You do it on the west side. Okay. okay. I don't know what east side and west side here in Atlanta is. Don't so I don't know if that's it. a good thing or bad. But... Uh, we'll find out. You know I mean? Okay. Let's, let's say I wanted one. Let me be here for like three months and then I, <laughs> <laughs> we can decide. Okay. Get, so let's say I wanted one. Yeah. What is the What are the numbers behind me being able to franchise from you um, currently today? Right. So there's an interview process. There's a ten thousand dollar licensing fee you mm -hmm. get the name for five years um but you also get our expertise of helping you build it out um there's a four percent royalty monthly mm. um but with that you get you're not going to the vendors asking them to open the account they're my yeah. vendors your account is open um, oh that's good and, and you can see what they're buying mm -hmm. yep. so the four percent is off of the sales or the profit the sales top line top line Oh. Yep. Um, and so my franchisees are amazing. One is a physician, Dr. Kendra. Mm -hmm. She's a med aesthetic doctor. So she's into beauty anyway. Okay, so this good. is like a good transition for her. And another one of my franchisees is a mother and daughter couple duo. Mm. Couple, duo. Yeah. Duo. Yeah. Mother and daughter duo. Um, and the daughter was in the hair business and the mom had just retired and was able to provide a lot of support. Okay. Um, and they do well. They're the only black-owned beauty supply store in Orange County. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they do very well. And their store, honestly, their store did better their first year open than I did my first year. Mm. They um, they put a lot of money and effort. They still put a lot of money. Probably got that effort. young energy, her daughter just going crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the store looks great. Like, if you cool. walk in, it's like you want to shop. So, yeah, $10,000 isn't bad at all. not and four percent. What? Let me ask you. What? What does a typical beauty supply store do? Like, if I wanted to open one, what? What do you think I could expect? Yeah. So the numbers change based upon what kind of store you have, right? Sure. So a product heavy store is not going to make as much money as a wig, bundle, extension hair because this this kind of stuff is more expensive. So they're not all the same. Not really, because it really depends on your investment. So we do have some products <clears throat> that you just absolutely have to carry. We have a list of like 120 products that if you're a Girl Cave store, you have to carry. Got it. Um, The other things, I kind of leave that up to the franchisees best upon where their store is. Yeah. Because the Anaheim store, the things they sell are totally different than what I sell at my Manchester store. The mm. customer is different. So, okay. you know, in Orange County, they might get away with selling a wig for four or $500. It's not happening at my some of my other locations mm. or inner city. So, it's, so you let them create their own price. Um, I give them a margin, like, mm -hmm. you know, we use a price calculator, but I also let them, I let them choose what types of products they have in their store. 
Um, Got it. So, for instance, my Anaheim store is close to a salon, so they carry a lot of salon-based products. Got it. I wouldn't carry, like, <clears throat> Redken and those kind of things because that doesn't appeal to an inner-city buyer. Got it. So, so t like, if, if I'm, let's say, it's somewhere in L.A., mm -hmm. and I'm asking, okay, I want to do a franchise, but yep. what do you think I could expect financially? Um, I th First, <clears throat> ask you what area do you want to open in? And I want to go, where I'll be at? Where will we be at when we go out there, Reese? What city? What I, what I, what I be doing? <laughs> okay, Inglewood. Okay, got it. So Inglewood is changing. I'm from Inglewood. Okay. Um, it is a new, newly affluent. Mm -hmm. I think there's a million dollar homes in Inglewood. Okay. So that store that I have in Inglewood does so much better than it did when I first opened. I think when we first opened, we were doing like twenty five thousand dollars a month. Now we do closer to sixty. Oh wow. Yeah. So. So let's say I can expect. Uh, forty thousand mm -hmm. a month. Four percent of that would be about. It was four percent of sixty thousand? Four percent of sixty thousand. One percent would be six hundred. So about twenty four hundred a month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if a store does sixty thousand, they gotta break you, you off on twenty four. That's good money. Yeah, I'll take it every time. That's good money. Mm -hmm. That's lit. Okay. So uh, now I see the whole picture of how the hype hair and the franchise all work together to create this beautiful brand that you're building. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. That's exciting. And okay, so it. how do you stop people from stealing? That's the only thing I can think customer, of. Like, you know. <laughs> customer service. Yeah. Honestly, get from behind the register and interact with people. No one's going to steal in front of your face. But if you got your head down, you're on your phone. You're talking to your baby daddy. You're not really engaged. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like I've walked in my store and I've seen like my employees on the phone, like arguing with somebody. Mm. And I see somebody in the corner and I'm like, you don't see this? Yeah. So we have those big um, mirrors in the store where yeah. you can see everything from one angle. So that's one thing. And I think just customer service. Hey, man. Mm -hmm. Them employees stealing too. All the time. <laughs> So, <laughs> all the uh, time any way you can prevent that or um, we do random back checks so anytime the leadership team could walk in you sign up for it when you say you're gonna work at the girl cave la so i want to see your bag i could pop up at closing mm -hmm. i could send my leadership team at closing yeah okay i'm gonna be with you for the last five minutes let me see your purse so we do back checks mm. Mm -hmm. but you don't you think they would be still in more the product than cash though you know, the cash, you got to be really savvy. You got to be really bold to do that. Yeah. I think the incentive is to steal the stuff, right? Like, I don't know. I mean, I'd I just, steal the cash. It's I'm not hard a thief, but <laughs> It's I hard would. for me to think like that. But in order for you to take cash, like, you would have to be savvy because we have an inventory system. So we see, like, what's going in and out. So if I see, and I see how many customers are coming in and out of the store. So if I yeah. see that we, and we have the chime, right? Yeah. So... If I see we had 200 customers one day, but my cash is short, I kind of know like what a 50 customer day looks like versus 150. Mm. I look at the numbers and you might get away with it a couple of times, but you're not going to get away with it regularly because eventually yeah. I'm going to be like, well, how come every time you work, the cash is not <laughs> what it is when she works? Yeah. So. Got you. Yeah. I, 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 I like this, man. This is an incredible, um, my, I never really spoke to anybody who had uh, beauty supply stores, but yeah. when I go in, I uh, only I only get tea outliners when I go to the beauty supply store. Okay, yeah, we okay, sell those. I just need the clippers, mm -hmm. right? Um, but it's not like a business where I always see a lot of people, so I didn't know how like the health of the beauty supply space was. Got it. Well, I think but, you're probably just in and out. Yes, I think for us, we probably spend about half an hour in the beauty supply store. Really easy. I don't go with my wife, so. Got it. She's definitely there 20 minutes or more. It's not like a run in, run out. You got to, mm. I mean, it's, I'm, I get my lip glosses from the beauty supply store. So it's a makeup experience. It's a nail experience. You might want some new polishes. Oh, I like it. All right. It's everything. Spent your whole life in Cali. Yeah. Now you're in my city. I've been in Atlanta for three days. Four days? Three days? Four days? So give me the plan. Why Atlanta? Okay, so Hype Hair, all of our cover stars, every cover we've shot in the last eight months is based here in Atlanta. So I'm flying in 
to do our covers. I'm flying mm -hmm. in to do our content. And I'm like, man, all this money I'm spending on flights and hotel rooms. And I really, my beauty supply stores do well with me there without. Yeah. So I felt comfortable after nine years of having that business to be able mm -hmm. to branch out. So <clears throat> I love my stores, but right now my focus is hype hair and this is where it is. The magazine is, oh. the brand manager is here. Um, like I said, we shoot all the content here. So I'm the only one that's not here. Gotcha. Hype hair. So I came here for that. So it wasn't to open a store, open a beauty supply no, store? No, 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 no. I mean, it's, I'm gonna do that while I'm here, but the goal is to expand the relationship with Conair expand the amount of content that we shoot all mm -hmm. of that just blow up high bear got it i saw also tell me that you did uh what was it hold on let me let me find it you actually you sent me something i sent you uh how, first off how you get your instagram to have this little funny little background how you do that what, what does it have uh, you, you didn't do this no that's a mistake or that's like inadvertently i didn't i don't know you have some kind of cool background i don't even know i had that all right, let's so talk wait, about let that later. That. Let me see uh, that. Yeah, it's, it's kind of, you see it? Oh, that's it's like crazy. yellow and pink. And it's smiley faces. Huh? That's I don't know how I did yours. that. Okay, well, all right. <laughs> Moving right along. Yeah. <laughs> I don't um, know how so that that. you sent me a flyer, uh, the cover reveal. The and cash that is doll. Cash yeah. doll. Mm -hmm. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. So you obviously pay her to do what? Okay, so. I don't want to put Cash Doll's business out there. Well, you don't got to pay her. No, no, no. You got to give her a number. But I'm saying you pay her to just be on the magazine or Well, is there's like a give and take mm -hmm. with Hype Hair. And so we don't, typical magazines don't pay people to do the cover. You give them a budget. You give them a budget for their hair and makeup. And, and oh, that's dope. Yeah. And they kind of work that out. So there's not like a flat fee, but there's a budget for your shoot. And how that star decides to spend that budget is how that star decides to spend it. I see, yeah. I see. Mm -hmm. So it could it could be a, a whole, whole lot of budget or just Right, whatever. depending on what, what we negotiate with the star is what the budget is. Yeah, and I guess- Cash I mean, Doll was, listen, she looks amazing on that cover. That was a big old shoot. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. And I guess the thing is, it's not like she's doing anything. Like I would take some, I'd take a little- No, Cash little, Doll is booked and busy. Do you know how long it took us to get her like committed? I know, but I'm saying her job isn't hard. She has to do a photo shoot and then you put her on a flyer. Oh, right, and it's not right. even a physical magazine necessarily. So Right, it's a digital rollout. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is she, do y'all like talk in there like she goes to the event, she promotes it too? Mm -hmm. That's okay, part that's of dope. it. So what I learned, um, especially with a digital magazine, you can't have a cover star that's not committed to the success of the outcome yeah right so you can't just like show up spend the budget then not come to the cover reveal not promote it on your social media so we've been really careful to make sure we choose cover stars that want to see their cover do well gotcha yeah. okay and um okay i saw the name before but i'm not 100 percent sure what cash doll does she's a musician yeah she's a rapper okay. she's like the honestly I she's my know. favorite female rapper ever really oh. yeah so this is like i had a fangirl moment when they told me that Cash Doll was going to do the cover. What song is it? Um, Ice Me Out. Ice Me <clears throat> Out. No? Um, what's another one? <laughs> how does this? How does it go? Like She has like so many hits. You don't know, Come on. You don't know Cash Doll? I, that's what I'm she's, saying. I know Cash Doll. I've heard Cash Doll and right. I know she's famous. But I don't you know. You don't know her songs. Okay, so Ice Me Out is like my favorite Cash Doll song. Ice Me Out. Yeah. How does it go? Can y'all play it? Uh, it's going... They try to block the monitor. Oh, I'll do it, it after. It, yeah. I'll do it after. Okay, yeah, yeah. You familiar with Ice Me Out? You heard Ice Me Out the song? I Who is it by? Oh, yeah. Period. Okay, All right, cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not my demographic, so I wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. No, no shade, Cash Doll. I'm sure you're lit. She's um, lit for sure. And then um, what's the I mean, it is Cash Doll. She mm -hmm. has uh what's the song for everybody? Um come on, y'all, give me some more Cash Doll hits. She got hits. Dang. Okay. What's up? What's up? She's like, um, to me, she she's my favorite female really? rapper. Really? Yes. Okay, so she's on the cover, and you're hoping that this does what for the business? Um, more eyes, more mm -hmm. visibility. Yeah. The more that people see high pair, the more that the brand recognition when they go into Nordstrom's Rack or Burlington or whatever yeah. retailer we end up, there's a connection to the brand. Got it. Okay, so we get these uh these known people mm -hmm. to be on the f the the cover 
And there's like a whole reveal of it. Correct. In hopes that when someone's in the store, they remember Cash Doll associated with Hype Hair mm -hmm. and they buy something because it's credible. That or they sense. follow or they subscribe to the magazine mm -hmm. or they go on our website regularly to see what stories we're running. And we have these amazing ads that run on our website. So every time oh. you hang out on HypeHair.com, Hype Hair gets paid. Good. So we want you to check out the website. I love that. We want you to subscribe to the magazine. We want you to buy a Hype Hair comb or brush when you're in Burlington. We want mm. you to love Hype Hair. I actually, next time I, I'm just going to go, buy, I'm just going to buy one. I don't know what I'm going to use it for, but I just want to support now. Thank you. Go to any Burlington. Go get a. Any Burlington. Any go Burlington. Go. We're carried in all Burlington. Oh, wow. There's like 935 stores. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Who else have you had on the cover? Oh, let's see. So we had Trina. Oh, right. okay. Yes. Um, we. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did Brad yeah. and Judy. Who? Oh, Brad and Judy. Okay, good, good. Yeah, we did Brad and okay. Judy. Um, we've had Ari. Uh, Ari. Ari Fletcher. Fletcher. That was. I know again. I know who that is. Ari was our Music, highest. Right? Music, right? No, she's an influencer. Influencer. Yeah, I. I'm sorry. Here's the, I know these people. I just don't yes. know what they do necessarily. I get it. I get it because yes. on Instagram you don't really get to. Like and yeah. I don't be on their page. I'm not following. I get them, it. So I just Ari's know. was the highest performing cover that Hype Hair has had since I've been the owner. And how do you know that? Um, mm. Analytics. Or what? What are you basing it off of? I base it on um, impressions mm. and feedback and advertisers that want to advertise with us after. Um, mm. So within like 24 hours, we had like over three million impressions from her cover reveal. Oh, it was wow. just within 24 hours. So. And she pro she promoted it. Oh yeah, she came. She's like she's a pleasure to work with. Good. Such a good person. Um and we have 50 press outlets there. She talked to every press outlet wow. and made sure that hype hair um looked good. And how I'm often grateful. do you make how often do you do these reveals? So we were doing them every other month, but now that I'm in Atlanta, we're going to go back to doing monthly covers. Yeah, cuz there's a they're all out here. Everybody is in LA. Yeah, for sure. No one is in LA anymore. Yeah. Um, are you going to have B Simone on there? I would love to. B is dope. Yeah, I like her. Yeah, that's my that's that, that's my girl, man. I would she's, love her. I actually was cool. thinking about that's highlighting business. podcast women. Word. Yeah. So she was on the top of our list. You should get B and Megan. Megan got really good skin, too. Yeah, Megan, her her uh, co-host. Oh, her best friend. Yeah. The, okay, got yeah, it. They, they run a podcast race. together. Yes. I think that would be dope. Okay, do me a favor. Hire me as like a tell talent, me a talent acquisition in Atlanta. Oh, for sure. Okay. No, for sure. I'm sure you like know all the business people too. I got you. Okay. I got you. Structure the deal, make it work. So let me is is it like uh, well I guess you have a set number for people, but I guess the number fluctuates based on who they are for sure yeah for sure you don't have to give me a number but who is the most expensive Ooh. who has been the most okay so it wasn't because of the person it was because of the travel okay trina's cover was the most expensive oh really yes gotcha but i had to um i had to fly in people mm -hmm. from atlanta that i wanted to be a part of the shoot like my writer Okay. So the shoots here in Atlanta are more cost effective because the team is here. I yeah. have to fly the team to Miami. Oh, so gotcha. That was, okay. That was a lot. But we you just covered it well. Yeah, she's cool too. She just did our uh, podcast summit and she she shot um, Love and Hip Hop Miami at the event. I love so that. she yeah she's super cool. My uh, my co host actually interviewed her too. So Got yeah, it. she's super cool. Yeah, she's super Trina cool. Was a lot of fun to work with. Man, yeah. and you don't have men on the covers, right? We did. We had uh, Bow Wow on the cover. Where? Yeah. He has a partnership with uh, Kiss, the hair brand. Okay. Um, Y'all don't need me, do you? Come on now. You Let me know. You Let say me know. You I got a smile on me now. You don't even go to beauty supply stores. I know. I know. It's crazy. I, I should have said that. <laughs> Lost a job. <laughs> no, we need you though. Oh uh, yeah, no, nah, for sure. I I think I'm a. This is the first, right? Well, let me see. Um, yes, yeah, the first. It's Sunday. Oh, this coming mm -hmm. up. Oh, might be tough. Yeah. Are you gonna do more events here? For sure. Okay. All right. Bet. No, I'm. I'm. This. This. This is good. You yeah. have a very interesting story, and oh, I respect you. you as a business person, man. I appreciate that. I really do. I needed like, to hear that today. You out here going to get it. Mm -hmm. And you've accomplished, and here's what I know. Tell me. 
a lot of times we're just in it. You've been in the game for nine years mm -hmm. and been doing a magazine for three years and you just wake up and you go get it, right? But you start, stop feeling like someone that is a game changer or like the top 1% of the world that's actually doing something major. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we just get up and we go to work and we get up and go to work. But I want to tell you right now, you are something special. Thank you. You really, really are. Managing four businesses um, that are not even in the state that you're living in, being bold enough to go out and build something else that ultimately still is in the family of stuff that you're doing, mm -hmm. but you are you just bought a company. You bought a couple companies, actually, because you bought the beauty supply store. Mm -hmm. You are killing it. Thank you. You are killing it. I don't hear that often, so maybe yeah. I needed to hear that. And your yeah, ex got you on child support. <laughs> don't say money. child support. No, child support, no edit money. that out, because he might file for child support. <laughs> no, it's a, money. it's That's a very crazy. fair neutralizing payment, and I'm happy to make sure he has it. How old y'all kids? <laughs> How old are y'all kids? Um, I have a 19-year-old daughter from a different relationship, mm -hmm. and then we have seven and eight-year-old. Seven and eight, gotcha, He's like, gotcha. I'm not going to play him. He's a really good dad. He just was not a good husband. Good. Oh, so what you do? Listen, you did something that ain't so. No, you know I can't even. I can't even hold you. I feel like um, I did do something. I evolved when I got mm. with him. I was twenty two, and I was very dependent on him, his resources, his insight, and um, I don't think I was. I think I still was a wife in a lot of ways, but I became more independent. I just think for him, yeah, he wasn't happy for me. Yeah. And that started to be weird. Like you can't sleep next to somebody that's not happy for you. Mm. And I think that's where it started. I can feel that. And instead of saying it, he showed me. Yeah. Right. How so? Well, you got a couple of side chicks out here. For sure. Oh. Mm -hmm. So how he cheat and then you still California is a no fault divorce state. So he could have had a hundred girlfriends and it wouldn't have mattered. Can you imagine that? Oh my God. So it doesn't even matter. I can't even bring it up in court. It's not relevant. Mm, it's mm, a no mm, fault mm. divorce state. You can get divorced for any reason and it doesn't matter. Oh, you are resilient. You <laughs> are a ball. You are, you literally, and I hope there's somebody that's watched. You're like the definition of a role model. Thank you. You've been through a lot. Still going a lot. through a bunch. Still going and through it, a yeah, it, it never stops, <laughs> right? But um, I believe you are definitely a. Uh, uh, someone that I recommend people follow. We just met each other, but based on your story and mm -hmm. your transparency and just kind of like your your energy. Thank you. I rocks with you. Man. I take that stamp of approval. Yeah, I love 100%, it. 100%. Thank 100%. You. Oh, for sure. This this happened for a reason. For sure. So um, anything we didn't talk about? No, we talked about ex-husbands, yes. alimony payments, beauty supplies, wigs. All that. Cash doll. I mean, this was full. Crack moms. <laughs> Right. We thought about a bunch of stuff, right? Water stores. <laughs> Water <laughs> stores. Oh my gosh. Okay, I do got one more question. Yes. Uh, where do you see yourself in the next five years? And the reason I'm asking that is, I want to be able to watch this interview five years from today and okay. say, look, Leah said she was going to do it five years ago. And look, she accomplished it. Got it. So, um, wow, there's so much that I want. I want there to be. You're going to. Thank you. Change my language. <laughs> um, in five years, there will be dozens of high pair and girl K beauty supply stores across the country. Will be a recognized name globally. High pair will be. Um, Do high pair in the uh, high pair stores? Oh, so I, we didn't even talk about this. So I'm transitioning the stores from Girl Cave LA to High Pair Store. Oh, yes. that's so, smart. Mm -hmm. That's smart. Why build two brands? Let's just yeah, build one. That's smart. Um, so there will be dozens of those stores across the country. My goal mm -hmm. is to franchise it to different women, mm -hmm. um, families. I feel like the retail stores, even though they've been a headache, they've empowered me financially. Mm -hmm. I would have never been able to walk away from my marriage, build this life for myself if I didn't have those stores. Yeah. So I want to be able to give that to other people. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what I see. And I see the uh, Conair high pair products in every single retailer you can I think of. That. Walmart, Target, 
Name it. Kro- what, what's the grocery store here? Publix? The Kroger's. Kroger's, Publix, yeah, whatever it is. You gotta call it the Kroger's. On, mm-hmm. the, on the building, it's a Kroger, mm-hmm. but if you want people to accept you, it's the Kroger's. The Kroger's. Got yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. So, like, that's like my uh, welcome to Atlanta, like. Oh, uh, 100%. Mm-hmm. I got Info, you. I needed that. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So that's what I, I, I want. And are you here by your, are you, did you move by yourself? You here? Mm-hmm. No, I moved with my fiance. Okay. So, oh, so both of y'all just moved. And what you do? <laughs> yeah, I mean, huh? Retired, isolate. Okay, y'all, y'all just outside. Recently no retired. Part of like our move that. is he just uh, he left his job after thirty three years. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. Good, good. I love this man. This is just yeah. a beautiful love story. It is. All right. Uh, well, look. Thank you so much for coming, man. This was a. Uh, this is really a treat. Uh, please let everybody know how they can connect with you, how they can support you as well, mm-hmm. and then close us out with a word of wisdom. Oh, okay, good. So you can follow me on Instagram, Leah L I A B Dias D I A S. Uh, High Pair Magazine, our website. So we're High Pair Mag on um, Instagram, Facebook. TikTok, YouTube, we're everywhere. And then you can support by subscribing to the magazine. It's a free subscription. Mm -hmm. Um, We just want to stay connected with our subscribers. And by also whenever you're in a Burlington Coat Factory or Mm -hmm. Nordstrom's Rack, getting a bonnet, getting a brush, getting a comb, and posting it and tagging it and telling people about the brand. How much is a bonnet? Um, $4.99. Okay. Okay. I'm going to give you a $50 voucher to get... Con Air stuff or hype hair, whatever. Yeah, in there, con, okay? con Air hype hair I mean, stuff. Uh, we're not buying like the hundred dollar curling irons and all that, but yeah. <laughs> yes, she's the only <laughs> woman on our staff. Got it. Here today, I'll send so, you a good love care package. Yes, there it is. <laughs> now, but can't be coming in with the luxurious, you know what I mean? You be you doing your thing. Mm-hmm. I'll work okay. on that. Uh, all right, well, close this out with a word of wisdom. Oof. I feel like I got so, I don't know what. Oh, you know what? I posted this on Instagram the other day. Do it scared. Mm-hmm. Do it scared. Yeah. Like, I've learned so much. Like, if you, like, have good intentions, you do right by people, like, it's going to work itself out. So just yeah. do it. Do it scared. There it is. This one said, Lan, I definitely did it scared. I bet. Mm-hmm. For sure. Listen, y'all. You can't close it out no better than that, man. Do it scared. Do yourself a favor, okay? Make sure you follow Leah and go support, okay? We yes. need support. We got to support one another, okay? Um, and also, go get you some social proof, meaning go build something. Build it really, really big. But it's your obligation to come back to your community and teach them how you did what you did, okay? It's the only way our community grows, all right? Like, share, subscribe. Hit the little subscribe or the follow button right now and share this with a friend, okay? We are out of here. Peace. Thank you. If you like the video that you just watched, click this one. You're going to like this one, maybe even more. Click it right now.